Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob Has a Podcast. And now here's the guy who's holding on to his wig. I am Rob Sesternino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob Has a Podcast here. Tuesday night. Wait, what's this? What? Yes. Tuesday night veto episode. Uh, we will have a break from Big Brother tomorrow night. I, I believe it's the uh amas i think i said cmas the other night who knows uh country music awards on cbs on wednesday night and then we'll be back on thursday night to talk about the eviction but we've got a really fun panel for you to talk about it all here with us first let me welcome in the youtube sensation if you missed it today you need to go check out the Melissa Denny drunk history reenactment of Keisha's birthday. Here she is, our own superstar, Melissa Denny. The summer of <laughs> Melissa. Yay! Woo! woo. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, definitely check out the video. It's I posted it on my Twitter. It's on YouTube and everything. It's it was very very fun to make. Uh, well, kind of. It was fun during it. And then afterwards, it was not so fun. But, you know, mm. it, it's worth it. I think it's funny. Uh, yeah. that I am not drunk right now, just so you know. I am okay. Not, okay. So. No, neither am I. Wink, wink. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's Melissa with three A's on Twitter if you want to check that out. Okay. Happy to have Melissa here with us on a Tuesday. Normally, Melissa, this would be your night to be the voice of the people on the stock watch. You'll have to wait till tomorrow. You know, tonight I can't be the voice of the people. Not until not until the round table. I have to wait. So, you know, that's fine. I'll just be my own voice right now. But tomorrow, tomorrow back to being the voice okay. of the people. All right. Tomorrow night, uh, we'll see if uh, this person comes in with a little bit less of an edge on the round table after we get the chance to talk some Big Brother tonight. It's Brent Welcome up, Brent, how are you? Yeah, I honestly thought about that because usually like this is the night where I get it all out and uh, and I I'm, it's in a different format tonight. Uh, but I am ready and uh, it's a very fun night. I'm so excited to be here on the night that Davon has her first competition win, Rob. I'm so excited yes. about that. Okay. And uh, overall, like it's just a uh, really stupendous week with maybe an iffy ending. We'll see. Okay. All right. Uh, a lot to talk about uh, here from this episode. And we're excited to have with us for the first time on a recap, uh, Sasha Joseph. Sasha, how are you? Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like the Paul Rudd meme, you know, like who would have thought? Look at us here today <laughs> on this momentous Look at occasion. Us. Yes. Yes. So okay. I'm just so thankful and channeling my inner Paul today. <laughs> yes. And Sasha, I see that your Twitter handle is up on the screen. Fun size underscore oh four. And it was a fun size veto that Davon won tonight. Yes. Wow. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably why karmic just togetherness that this was able to happen. <laughs> okay. It all worked out. All right. So uh, we're going to take your questions later on in the show. If you want to get your questions in, I posted a tweet earlier at Rob Sesternino on Twitter, and you can go ahead and post your questions for the live show here tonight. Uh, a couple of updates here at the top. Okay. This is a big one for people chatting live we had a meeting with our moderators last night we and did check this out okay one you can write in all caps okay <laughs> take it easy though take it take it easy all right all right exactly don't go too crazy <laughs> have fun it's 2020 you do you chat okay you're allowed to talk in caps all right uh number two also you could post spoilers in the chat okay if you don't want to be spoiled about anything don't chat live, okay? Yes. Chat going nuts. The no no nuts. lowercase letters to be found <laughs> anywhere. <love> it. <laughs> it's all caps. It's all caps, okay? All right. If you don't want to be spoiled, then just uh, and, and if and if people are there's like a live HOH going on or whatever, if you're on the podcast, try not to get distracted. Okay, we're we're loosey goosey yeah. here. Oh my god, the chat is saying we're free. You're free, free. You're free Yes. You're no free. rules. Yes, obviously, people, we're not going to discuss any spoilers on the episode until we get to the spoiler section. But if you go into the chat room of your own volition, start reading what they're saying, you take your chances. That's what we're saying here yeah. at RHAP. Rob has a website.com slash patron brings yep. you capital letters now yes. in the <laughs> chat. Okay. Uh so that's that's what's going on. Okay. Now, let's talk about uh, a little bit of uh, this exciting night, which was disrupted 
by David using his power. And David is going to use the disruptor power and he is going to uh, work up lots of fake tears in this episode. He's got fake tears uh, before, uh, you know, before he uses the power and then more fake tears after he uses the power. Uh, Sasha, what do you think of David's superpower? I think this is hilarious. And I, I really was thinking about it all week. Like what this, this bad acting, honestly, but I figured it out. Y'all this is his audition for the bold and beautiful. That's what it is. Yeah. Yes. So that's exactly why this is happening. And there, that's why he's putting these tears. Cause you know, he could be a plot twist in Bo bold and beautiful too. Not just big brother y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Melissa, do you think that that's possible that we know that uh, David was trying to uh, backdoor get onto love Island? Is that possible that he's been trying to hit all the CBS shows? You know, it's totally possible. I, uh, if this is his audition, then go for it. <laughs> you know, that's fine. But yeah. uh, I don't know if we should be using uh, Big Brother. As, I, I think that's probably the harder way to get onto a show, to mm -hmm. go on Big Brother, compete, stay the whole time, uh, and then try and get on a show. It's really a lot easier to just, like, go and audition. But, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, if yeah. this is the way he wants to do it, that's fine. Okay. It's got the, it's got the fake tears going. Brent, are you, are you like David's fake tears? I mean, look, here's the thing. Like, I thought it was like, it took up a lot of the episode and I would have rather seen it's impressive, more of, though. He had it was like impressive a running... and it was very fun. And I like, I know we like fun here at RJP, so I'm cool about that. I'm very, I'm very, very fancy Fencerton about this. But on the other hand, like this was really Davon's moment. This was not David's moment. Like, da like David's moment came and went like in the blink of an eye. Davon's moment, on the other hand, was like, you know, a, a telenovela, as they say, uh, over two days. And it was like, will she or won't she? Even those of us who are fans of her weren't even sure exactly what she was going to do with the veto. She wouldn't even tell Kevin that she was going to use the veto. You're mad that they yes. spent too much time on David. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. I just well, like, it's like a choice, you know? I, yeah. I think also, I think the problem is, is that I think the initial tears is good. Like if you're trying to make people feel bad for you because you got put on the block and you know you don't know what's going on or whatever, that is good. Like that makes people think you're sad or weak or like maybe you're not like ready to you know go compete in the veto or whatever. But I think that he took it too far with the uh, like okay after someone uses a power on you, if anything, yes. you wouldn't be crying unless you're crying happy tears. Like you might just be like oh my God, like maybe shocked, like shocked maybe would have been the better emotion to play, but instead he played just like sad and then like Sherlock Holmes or yeah, something. Like, can it we was talk very about this? weird. Yeah, like this is where his inexperience shows because like, yeah, it's a great idea, Sasha, to, to you know, say, oh, I'm going to pretend that I didn't have the power and I'm going to cry and I say, ask people like, you know, did you use the power on me? Did you use the power on me? But he didn't like think from A to B to C because he hasn't played Big Brother before. Again, he's a rookie. He's not thinking, okay, so logically here, obviously no one would have used the power on me because they themselves could go up as a replacement mm -hmm. nominee. So it has to, by default, be me and everyone else in the house. But David knows that it's it, it's obviously him. Right, well, and not, not only, just... Well, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. And No, and not just that. It's in addition, right, to like having this bad read about like, oh, who is, gonna, who is it going to be? It's you. Yeah. And like, I think why did you not bring in your people beforehand and like kind of just like be like this is a great way for me to use this as some leverage they talked about it on the live feed so i don't want to keep bringing it up more but like i'm so frustrated that he just used it that's it right like i needed yeah. some more like strike some deals do something with it yeah Plus, i thought like, it was just for fun yeah. You gain credibility by doing things in the mm -hmm. game and playing powers. And instead he's like, he looks pathetic because it's like, oh, somebody had to save me. Somebody rescued me. I wonder he's who it was. He's going to reveal finale night, Melissa. Well, if he gets there, I just feel like it's like. No one will and care. Also, and also that's yeah. the thing. It's like no one will care at <laughs> no that point. No one will point. care by then. Like remember it... when Tyler was like, oh, like I had a power and I didn't use it. Like no one cared. It was like, already we have our minds made up. Like by mm -hmm. that point, they've already decided whether you're a good player or not. So I think that like David should have been using this to his advantage to be like, look, like I can win things. I use this power to save myself. Like you guys tried to get me out this week and look, you couldn't do it because of me. Not like, 
somebody just randomly saved me. I don't know who it yeah. was, and we'll never find out. Like, yeah. this is stupid. No, that's totally right. I'm totally in agreement with Melissa on this one because, like, we talked about this before under the roundtables, the fact that for you know one reason or another, powers are uh, used in the game as ways to measure people. Like, oh, you, you know, even if you're given it by America and something happens to you, people are like, oh, well, you did that. You took somebody off the block with the power that random that America randomly gave you with a you know, fan vote or something. But he actually won this power. This was even better. So he obviously should have used it and, and told people like, hey, like and owned it, like owned it, own your stuff, man. Because here's the thing. I fought with people on Twitter about this and they were like, no, but I love the paranoia and the, uh, the, the dissonance that he's causing within the big alliance because they don't know who used the power. Honey, they know who used the power. They know mm -hmm. who used the power, and yeah, you know, whatever that you move. thought they were getting, uh, like lasted for like a minute. And uh, I yeah. thought, like he needed, he didn't, he needed something, some something on his resume, some long term credibility, uh, in order to uh, again, what's the goal, Rob, to win the five hundred thousand dollars and win the game? I feel like this would have helped him. Yeah, but this is classic David, and yes. uh, I love David, yeah. and uh, I'm happy he's here. I don't want to hear anything else bad about him because he's, uh, <laughs> Sounds he's good. delivering. That uh, He's cracking me up, and uh, I, I love what he's doing in he's the house. He's gotten better. Yeah. And this yeah. was better. the first, and this was really the first moment, right, of, like, the change that the big alliance isn't getting power and isn't getting, yeah. like, some change. So he he got the ball rolling. So I can't be too mad at him. Yes, well, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he saved this week, him and Davon. They saved this week. I mean, this would have been okay, either it's Kevin or David leaving, and that's the end of that. But they saved the week. They single handedly or double handedly, because it's two of them, <laughs> saved the week. <laughs> like, I mean, we have to give the credit to that. So, yeah. yes, I'm here for David and his comically terrible gameplay here yes. in, in, in this house. So, I am too. Um, <laughs> Even if he's like sort of like the uh, character in the game who everybody else is playing so tight and so nervous, you got to keep it with the big group and just sort of like by dumb luck, like he's uh, shaking things up. I'm here for it. Yeah, so. he's like the guy at the poker table who has like money <laughs> but doesn't know how to play Texas Hold'em and is like, uh, ah, I go all in, you know, like, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. that's yes. exactly who he is. And you know, he's not good in the dark, but apparently now he is. So right. here yeah. we are. <laughs> okay. So they use the disruptor power, and then uh, we get the disruptor lady voice. I thought that this was an interesting creative choice. Here's the disruptor lady. <laughs> the disruptor power is now out of play. Good luck. You're all going to need it. <laughs> that was a little evil for not really sure why everybody's <laughs> going to need luck after the disruptor got used. It's over. <laughs> yeah. I'd be, I'd be happy. It's out of play. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And if you're somebody else who knows maybe where one or both of the other powers are, then you feel a lot better about yourself right now. So uh, that was definitely a choice as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sticking with uh, David momentarily, uh, David goes around the house and then uh, tries to ask who saved him, who saved him. And it's pretty hilarious. Even, you know, Cody can't even look at him with a straight face. <laughs> of this was like when Danny was asking Cody about who the hinky vote was, and <laughs> Cody's like, No, it was you. You were like, No, <laughs> you literally just talked to me about it. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cody is not even giving David the time of day. Like, all right, yeah, like somebody save you. Like, come yeah. on, let's be real here. Who would save you? I will say this: like, if there's something that Cody Calafiore knows, it's bad acting. I'll just say. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's like, where did everybody go? They disappeared. Yeah. Um, so I, I like that shit a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked uh, David uh, going through that with everybody. But uh, Tyler and Danny are going to have a conversation. And that Sasha, they had made a truce. Even though Tyler said, you could put me on the block. It's okay. I don't care. I deserve it. Uh, but then they made a truce. But then she did put him on the block and she tells us in the diary room she does want Tyler to go home. I think in that moment, 
like as soon as um the voiceover came on right the disruptor danny immediately knew what was going on like she because in the bed i think she was with nicole right in yeah. the bed and she was like oh no it's happening what do i do what do i do so i think immediately danny knew and she was thinking about it even on the way down to the to the dining table so i think she knew she was gonna put tyler up just because Maybe back door, maybe not, right? But that name was, I think, mulling around in her mm. head. So I think later on, maybe things change. But at that moment, I really do believe she was going for him because of this drama from last week. And I think he's won a lot. But I know Tyler cannot handle this. He is always pressed when things come for him and when people come for him. So it was glorious, <laughs> like glorious. I think, honestly, I think Danny... Once she makes this move, I think she needs to get Tyler out. Like, Tyler is very good about, like, smoothing things over and being like, look, like, I totally get it. You, like, I, I, we had all that, our issues last week. Like, now you, you were even because now you put me on the block, blah, blah, blah. But I think once she's made this move, like, she has to go through with it or else he's always going to have in his mind. And he's always going to have a reason to put her up, whether it's needed or not. Like, He'll always have that. And I think that like, especially in a house when basically there's just so many overlapping alliances and like everybody's like working together, like to have a reason to put somebody up is so crucial. And I think that Danny at that point, when she puts him up, like obviously she was looking to put him up as a backdoor target. Then she puts him up uh, and he still complained the veto, which is really risky, but he doesn't win the veto. I think now at that point, Danny's got to get him out or else she's in trouble. Brent, let me ask you about uh, something that Sasha brought up. The, do you feel like that Danny uh, was really playing this up, that she knew there was a possibility that she would have to do some sort of a renomination because of the powers, and that she had she was like playing it up more, that she was like, oh, I didn't know what to do, kind of like Kevin two weeks ago with uh, when he picked uh, Nicole and Cody to go up, where he was just like, uh, I just heard your names. I don't know what to do. Uh, I guess uh, right. Cody and Nicole. And yeah, everybody saw through so it. I will say, no, I, I, I feel like that she was definitely surprised about this. Uh, like Kevin was definitely shadier in that moment than Danny was. And Danny was not expecting to have to name a new nominee right away. I mean, she, I mean, obviously they knew three powers were out there, but they didn't know what they were. And she knew her power wasn't very powerful. So she's like, well, maybe like it, it's, it's no big. Like maybe I'm totally in the clear here. So I do think that she... Uh, here's the thing. I, I think she tried to cut the baby down the middle. She tried to saw the baby in half because she put up Tyler as a nominee. She decided in that moment, you know what? I'm going to put up Tyler. There were other people not in her alliance that she could have put up and she decided to take the shot like, and put up Tyler. Now she's telling us in the diary room that she wants Tyler to go home, but then she's telling Tyler, like, I really want you to stay. And then like privately to her allies, she's also saying, I want Tyler to stay. I think, and I talked to a friend, friend of mine about this today. I think that Danny has overlearned the lessons from BB 13. I think that she is so scared of making the big move that now she's making the safest move on the board that she can, which in this instance is going to be end up being terrible. And we'll get to it when she names the replacement nominee. Mm -hmm. uh, but my goodness, she needs to take out once you put Tyler up on the block, mm -hmm. you have to go after him. She said this herself like a week ago, Rob, yeah. she said this to us. Like if I take the shot at Tyler, if I make the first shot, I have to make sure that I don't miss. And now she's essentially like saying, oh no, I didn't shoot at you. Did I shoot at you? Like, I didn't shoot at you. Like, really? Like me? Like, I wouldn't. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, I, it's, it's terrible. I can almost guarantee that like in a couple weeks from now, she's going to be shaking her head. Like I should have gotten him out while I had the chance. Like, look at me. I'm on the block now. Like I, I just can guarantee it. I mean, even if it's not, even if it's not Tyler individually taking the shot at her, it's going to be like Tyler and Cody and Enzo like teaming up and then taking the shot mm -hmm. at her. Like it's, it's not good for her, especially like Brent said, with the replacement nominee. And that Ian she is a number for her. She has a and good she relationship even said with that. Ian. Yeah. She yes. said the reason why she can put him on the block is because it won't make anybody upset aside from, because the only person that Ian has connections with is her and Nicole. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Where are you and Nicole? Duh. That's like, fantastic. What, are you, mm -hmm. what are you doing? That's good for you. Like he's a connection mm -hmm. to you. And you just said his only connection is to you and Nicole. Like, that's good for you. It's I just crazy. want to add that 
I spoke yesterday on the slop with Brendan and Rachel and Brendan, they actually said the, uh, 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 Brent, they said the opposite of what, what you said that they felt like that she's uh, repeating the same lesson exactly from uh, big brother 13. Well, I, I, I rarely disagree with the royalty of uh, big brother, <laughs> uh, Brendan and Rachel, but no, I, I, I think that Danny is really, she really feels it from big brother 13 that she made the big move against uh, Brendan and Rachel twice. And then immediately paid the price for that when big Jeff back, Backdoored her the next week, and she has said that in the house, like that she's she's alluded to that, like I like I've done big moves as as a as a fangirl in the in the past, but this this year I want to play it smart. I want to win the money. I came here to win. I didn't leave my baby and my and my husband to come here and not win the money. But yeah, I I, I really think that she's this is weak sauce, Rob, and mm -hmm. uh, she's gonna look back on this. She may ultimately through through events not of her own volition get through the next week, but. I, I think this is a mistake. To be yeah. fair, yeah. I, I do really like Danny this week, like in the diary room and the way that she's like, she's hungry for the win and is she's like, better. Well, basically like in the diary room, she's saying the right stuff and she's saying, it's like, yes, like I have faith that this is a good player. I have faith that she's doing the right thing. But then she's making moves that aren't necessarily in her best interest. I mean, for the most part this week, it went well considering that powers were being used i think the issue here only at least in my opinion is the replacement nominee i think that every other aspect of it was fine it's like you put up the two pawns you want to backdoor tyler unfortunately a power gets used but then tyler gets put on the block and then it's like then i think the issue happens when davon wins veto and uses it and then she makes the wrong move for the replacement nominee like she really should have put up what she said she was doing, which is put up the ultimate pawn. And instead she put up a super, like a, like a sitting duck essentially. Yep. Mm. Someone who she herself Quack said has no Quack connections Quack. to anybody except me and Nicole. So what do you mm -hmm. think is going to happen to him, Danny? She, and by the way, when she put Ian up on the block, like she's saying in the moment to everybody, like I need Tyler to go home. I'm, I'm, I need to, I need a pawn, but she's lying to y'all. Mm -hmm. She's lying mm -hmm. to the house guests. She's lying to Davon and David and, and Kevin. She, she, if she knew if that veto got you, she was going to put up Ian and they're all going to pretend that Ian's the pawn. They're going to vote out Ian. They're going to try to on Thursday. Yeah, okay. they were going to stage a whole thing, but we can yeah. talk about that later about what they were going to do for it to, mm -hmm. like yeah. to, for Tyler to feel threatened even though Tyler was in on it. And I yeah. think okay. Danny's not understanding how well insulated she yeah, is. Yeah, I do want to talk about that when we get to uh the renomination. Uh let's get to the veto where we had a veto where uh that Danny picks uh Davon, Tyler picks Ian, Kevin picks Enzo. And Danny asked Davon, whatever you do, just keep the nominations the same. Davon says, you got it. Well, I'm going to win this. Keep the nominations the same. Nicole comes in with the uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids laser beam. And she's going to teleport the house guests somewhere. What, what happened here, Melissa? Can you explain to me the plot of uh, what happened? That this was a teleport ray, but it made them giants? I think I think it's that Nicole tried to murder everyone mm -hmm. that was in the house so she would win. She she tried to get them off the cast, Melissa. <laughs> and it, yeah, and it oh. went it went awry somehow. And somehow they ended up with teeny little beers. That's like really like kind of what I got from it. Did I don't they know what they were the trying beers? to convey. Were they giants? I, I I don't really know. I, I don't I, I look, I gotta say, for this veto competition. Like everybody, or at least what I've seen from Twitter or whatever, is people complaining about it and saying it's stupid. Is this the best they can do? Like, blah, blah, blah. But I have to say that I liked it because I feel like it's one of those weird ones where it's like, we don't know who is going to be good at this and who is not going to be good at this. And I don't think you have to be like a very physical person or a very tiny person or whatever to do a good job. I think that like, it's just random. It's like, it's the same thing I feel well, I guess this is a little different, but it just reminded me kind of of like the egg competition where you have to put like, it's like the chicken wire and you have to like put the egg through it. And some people are just like really yeah. like super naturally good at it, but like some people are just not. And then you never know mm -hmm. who it's going to be. So I think it it's one of those style competitions. And I think we need more of that because I feel like this is what makes it random like any other veto competition. I feel Tyler would have just like beasted it and been like, okay, great. Now I'm safe. But this one, we actually had a shot to have something different happen. And Davon was good at it, apparently. So, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, Rob, I will say that uh, one of our moderators stacked in the chat says, you know what they say? 
tiny beers, huge tweezers. So, uh, <laughs> like, I think that, that's what happened here. Like, they, they shrunk the beers, but not the people. And that's why they look so weird. When they showed them initially, and they showed, like, the, the, the beers, and they showed the people, like, uh, you know, looking at it. Like, it was like a mega close-up, Sasha. Like, it was a... <laughs> Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> mega close up to Enzo's tongue. That's right? what the close up was. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, you brought up uh, the shrink ray and the reactions to it. Uh, the house guests got a chance to really show off their acting chops where the shrink ray was uh, fired by Nicole Franzel. All right, let's start this bad boy up. <laughs> Whoa! Where'd they go? Where'd they Cody. go? Cody! Oh my God! He had like <laughs> so he terrible. had nothing. He didn't have anything in his eyes. If you notice, he had mm -hmm. nothing in his eyes. There was no emotion there. It was just, where'd they go? <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, did I, did I see this correctly on Twitter this week? I, I saw some people, I thought, getting upset that they kept referring to Davon's veto as a tiny veto. And I saw some people seeming like they were getting upset of like, why do they ha these house guests have to diminish Davon's win and call it a tiny veto? <laughs> did you yeah. see this? I, I, I did. I saw that too, and I was there very was some confused outrage. At first. There was some yeah. outrage about yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think people that... on Twitter sometimes need to calm down. Like, <laughs> just because they're calling it a tiny veto is not like <laughs> necessarily <laughs> condescending. Like, clearly, like it was How a tiny little veto. This? this is the last straw that they now they're calling Davon's only win. It's her first win ever, and it's the biggest move of the season. And they're calling it a <laughs> tiny veto. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, you know, look, if there was something to rant about, I would rant about it. But I think there's nothing to see here, people. Like, you know, they, they had the little veto up there. The producers knew. Like, the producers you... knew that this was going to be Davon's veto, and they purposely gave her a teensy little veto. I will say it is a little annoying that, like, Davon wins her first veto in three in three years, and, uh, like, they don't have that big, shiny, you know, a gold dap medallion. Yeah, look, this was a but... uh, hundred times more memorable. But, uh, but people did they, not know they... it was a tiny veto. I yeah. and, and they were mad. That people referred to it as a tiny veto. Yeah, yeah. Like the people that don't over. watch the live feeds. Yeah, because <laughs> Devon came in and she was holding mm. it like this. Like it mm. was sort of hilarious. I was like, what is that? Is that a pin? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Until that moment, people were so angry. But I think as soon as that moment happened, we could like run with it and be funny about it, which I appreciated. And I think BB these BB streets needed it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, she could like turn it like into like an earring or something. <laughs> I feel like that you could do stuff with the tiny veto. Uh, all right, so congratulations, Davon. She has the veto, and now uh, we are going to see now. All right, everybody's like, no, they can't use the veto. That's it. She's got to. She's got to keep it the same, uh, and we've got to figure out who should go up on the block. Christmas is really set off this whole episode sasha that christmas what a what a cool calm collected customer she is that's all it's all so easy and logical for christmas about uh what danny needs to do yeah stay loyal why would you cannibalize yourself why would you cannibalize yourself stay loyal the committee that's it it's like a robot and she's just saying the same things cannibalize Committee, cannibalize committee, and it's like give it up. <laughs> I know, like, and I look, I hear you. I, I, I'm with you, okay. But you have to consider that a lot of these players <laughs> made it to the end of the game playing exactly the way that they're describing. Uh, uh, Cody Calafiore, Christmas, they both were in the inside of the inside of their alliances, and they tried to keep things mm -hmm. as you know comfortable as possible, taking out the outside of the onion, taking out the outside of the onion until they got to the middle. And that's how they got to the end. And, you know, if you look at it from Christmas standpoint, you know, she was like one comp away from winning Big Brother 19. If you look at it from Cody's standpoint, you know, he just mm -hmm. he took Derek to the end and got beat. But like both of them feel like they played the game the right way the first time. So, like, of course, they're not going to want to play the kind of game that we want, Sasha. I mean, I hear you on that. Believe me, I'm with you. And I, I want them to play a little bit more out in the open. But they like to play this, you know, like, hey, we're all on the same side. And I'm sorry, you're just left out, even though you happen to be all the people of color. But like, that's, no. so, that's so big yeah right Tea. yeah but but that's the thing right like to me i i hear you brenton and i agree right like i think that's why i was a little apprehensive that chris
Christmas was even on this yeah, path totally. because I was like, BB-19, here we go. Like, I hate it. And I want them to understand there's six of you. And if all six of you think that, hey, we're just all going to coast and then we'll get to final two, six is not going to get to final two, right? So how are you at least padding yourself up? Which goes back to Danny, right? And how she was in a good spot before this, like flipping back to getting Ian out, but, um, or whatever. But I think that she, like, these people need to have some, like, give, like, they need to have some give in their game if they're going to actually get to final two and win. So that's why I think I'm a little frustrated because it's the committee isn't making it to final two, all of you at least. Yeah. We're going to see. Think, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think it's something to think about too. Like if you're Christmas and Danny is sitting there, like, I, I don't know, like I'm going to put up whatever and thinking and having to think about what to do. I think that you should start thinking, okay, why is Danny thinking that way? Like, are there other people in the house that she, that she is working with that are outside of this Alliance? That's why she doesn't want to put anyone else up. Like, cause from Christmas's perspective, there's so many outside people like that we can still put up. Like it's, we don't have to turn inward yet, but for Danny's perspective, she's like, yeah, I'm kind of working with everyone. So I don't really want to put up any of those people. There are people in the committee that I'm not so sure on. I might as well put one of them up. Um, and so Christmas should be thinking like, Hey, this is like a red flag here that Danny is, is looking all, all around and everyone's like on an equal playing field as to mm -hmm. who can be put up. But she's not really thinking that way. She's just like, well, Danny's stupid. Like, why, yeah. why would Danny do that? I will say, too, also keep in mind that Christmas does also have a power that can only work as in, insofar as blocking a replacement nominee. So I know that uh, Christmas was wanting to make sure that she, that her butt didn't end up on mm -hmm. the on the block. So, uh, you know, she wanted to make sure that she could keep that power for one more week so she can do what she wants with it next week, which will be the final week that it can be used. Uh, so uh, she got her way this week. And uh, it, it, it looks like that uh, both of the nominees have a fighting chance. All right. Cody is talking with Tyler. So no shot. There's no chance Davon is going to use the veto. No way. She can't use it. Impossible. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, he goes and talks to Danny. Says D Day is going to use the veto. He's beside himself. Can't believe it that he is uh, that there Look, the veto is used. Yeah, like, guys, this is a product of his season. Like his season went like storybook ending. Like the, it went exactly the way it needed to go. Like that's why I remember when like Donnie almost won that HOH competition once the Battle of the Block ended in sixteen. Mm -hmm. Like I was like so bummed because that was the first time that Cody Calafari would not have been able to play from the front. He would have had to play from the back, okay? Which is a much harder place to play from. Mm -hmm. But like, he's so used to getting his way so that when somebody says, no, I'm going to do what I want for my game, like, he doesn't even know how to respond to that. He's like, exactly. what? This isn't, yes. like, this isn't part of it. Like, check, like, Chrissy, check the rule book. Is this a part of the script? Like, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think this is allowed for them to play their own game. So yeah, that's why he's so incredulous. So they're talking and about Ian going on the block and Sasha that Danny wants to know, Cody, would you vote out Tyler? Maybe we should vote out Tyler. No, no, we're not voting out Tyler. No, this is exactly the it's a joke, right? This is where Danny I need Danny and Nicole to wake up like, you know, knock mm -hmm. them in the head like this, like, hello, because I need them to understand. Look at what everyone's doing, just like Melissa was saying for Christmas. I need that for actually every single one of them, zero self-awareness, right? Nicole is literally crying that Ian is on the block, but how is that not like immediately raising light bulbs for people to be like, oh, that's her untouchable Christmas. But um, honestly, right? Like to me, Cody needs to also understand that he is the entitlement maybe is blocking all of it, but I need like Cody to understand that like, oh, right, they're not all for me. Oh, <laughs> and that's, I don't, I don't yeah. think it'll happen. Good luck yeah. with that one. Uh, so mm -hmm. that ain't going to happen. Uh, it's Cody thinks that everybody's playing for Cody Califiore and uh, everyone's just trying to push him to get him up to that $500,000 that he's owed from BB 16 in his mind. Mm -hmm. I think also like Danny shouldn't be asking Cody to get rid of Tyler. Like if they're going to yeah. make a move against someone like in their alliance, like that needs to be like a, strategic like under the table sort of move like it needs to be like right. a, okay Davon Kevin David like let's work together and get Tyler out like I if you're gonna take a shot at your own alliance it 
shouldn't, you shouldn't be relying on your alliance to take that shot. It should be, okay, now I'm going to turn on my alliance. I'm going to get everyone from the outside to join me and we're going to take this shot. Like it just, it doesn't make sense. Like so, she, she wants it to be both ways. Like she wants yeah. to still be in the alliance and be like, okay, but the alliance is doing this. It's not me. Like I want this person out for my own benefit because he went against me, but I want the alliance to back me up and it to be like a whole like group thing. But really, like if she's going to take the shot, it has to be on her own as a shot against the alliance. And I think she's not getting that. No, she's not getting that because she overlearned the lessons from BB-13. She's trying to play it safe. Yeah. And instead, she's just making what ends up being a really terrible move for herself and a good move for other people. People like Cody Calafiore are like, huh, this this week went great. <laughs> we got uh, uh, Ian's up on the blog next to Tyler. We, we might have a chance to save our boy. I mean, it's basically like Cody's HOH. Mm -hmm. I will say that Danny would be at, the, at points, you know, toyed with the idea of putting Enzo up on the block. Um, but I think two things happened. One, uh, Cody really pushed like, Hey, C Christmas and Memphis are going to be mad. Uh, you know, like if you try to get out, uh, Tyler, you know, we really need to, you know, try to put up somebody else. And number two, even though the en Enzo's not in the, in the committee, like he, he's like a, almost like a honorary seventh member. Plus he was in this like <laughs> six, which most of them were a part of, uh, two Nicole Franzel. I'm not going to like her on the stock watch tomorrow. Really dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. Like she could have saved Ian here. If he yeah. goes home on Thursday night, it is because Nicole Franzel did not push hard enough and far enough for Danny to not nominate him. It doesn't make any do, sense. All she had to do was say, no. Yes. No, don't. She put, didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. She was like bummed about like, oh, I know this sucks. She's but like, no. I'm just going to be sad about it. And Danny's like, Danny's like, yeah, well, I'll be sad. But Nicole's like, and she's like, well, I mean. She but needed it's like, to protest. She needed to say like, no, yes. like this is for this our game. Happen. You yeah. literally yeah. just said that Ian is with us. Like, why should we get Ian out? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It only benefits like Cody and Tyler and all them. Like, if you want to get Tyler out, yeah. I will back you up, but we need to put someone else up on the block. Do not put Look, my ally Melissa, up. Can we can at least acknowledge the fact that I feel like Danny and Cody had this weird chemistry? Mm -hmm. Like where she just she's like Oh boy. I mean, look, I'm just like they're both married and whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm just saying, but Cody's like, not have, married. Cody's not married. Oh, sorry, he's got a girlfriend. Yeah, they're, yeah. They, they're both taken, is what I meant. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. like, uh, spoken for. I feel like <laughs> I do feel like that she's just she's she does what he says. It's sort of gross. Yeah. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Nicole yeah. and her. It's yeah. It it they go to Cody. What look, do you think? Yeah, like, I, I'm sorry, Sasha. Doing? I see people in chat no. like, oh, Brent's going there. Come on, like, we all see it. We, If you're watching the feeds, you see how what they're like when they're, Sasha, when they're in a room together and they're talking strategy. Like, the, the way they look at each other, there's something there. Am I wrong? No, okay. you're not. But we still respect, you know, like. Yeah, I we admit, respect it. Yes, yes. but but, but I do flirty. think. they're flirty, yes. But maybe that's, I think that's Cody's personality, if is. I'm being yeah. honest, which we've known, unfortunately, from 16, but. I yeah, I think it's I think it's beyond that. I really believe that it is this whole idea of like, well, what does the committee want? But and then what does Cody want? Right. Like it's a weird hierarchy where it's like the men really get to dictate this and take up more space than the women do, even when the women actually are the ones like doing the work in this moment and like who won HOH? A woman. Who won yes. the A woman. How many women are left in the house? Four. Like the like I think, yeah, I think this, I think that this move of putting Ian on the block is really bad for Danny, but I think it's way worse for Nicole. Yeah. Like Ian yeah. will do anything for Nicole. Ian yeah. is like so invested in their like final two. And I, you know, even if, even if Ian is sitting there, like I, you know, I don't, I'm not really working with Nicole or whatever he wants to say with like the fact that she's also a winner, like he'll yeah. want to keep her around. So there would be no reason for him to turn on her anytime soon. It, it makes absolutely no sense. And I think the thing is, is like, well, people could argue, well, Nicole's not HOH. She can't do it. It's like, no, no. Danny is your ally. Like Danny is Nicole's like number one ally, essentially. Well, besides Cody. And it's like, she should be telling Danny, don't put Ian on the block. This is not the time. This is not the move. And she's not saying anything. So she's just trying to, find some way to give Ian a pity vote. So yes. that it look good to Here's Ian. My question with Nicole and Ian, it, is she really, uh, is she really upset that Ian is going home? She uh, should be for, yeah. Uh, and because that we know that if Nicole doesn't want something to happen, she, she finds ways of making things not happen that she doesn't like, which that's is why weird. I'm, well, that's why I'm not, I'm not, set on saying that 
Ian is going home this week. Like, okay. I just yes. feel like we mm. can't say that. Yeah. Well, no, we can't say that. Uh, but or, like, like, go ahead. Brent, who do you think had the better fake tears tonight, David or Nicole <laughs> Franzel? <laughs> Oh, wow. I think David's were better because they were so like on command. It was like magic watching him. I'll give him that. Like they even had little magic sound. Like Plus they both cute. come at the same time. Yes. yes. Like, which is so unnatural, but it's just like. Bleak. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I wouldn't hear it. But like, uh, yeah, that was awesome. I love how they edited that. It was really fun. Uh, and uh, it was probably one of the brighter spots of this episode, aside from the fact that Davon won the veto, which uh, I also do want to talk more about uh, her because they really yada yada the whole like yeah. Davon, it will she or won't she. And I feel like that uh, we, we missed some of the. Okay. Details All right. We'll go uh, talk about it. Uh, well, so like, uh, like, I'll say this I love Davon. I don't even know myself if I could have used the veto in those circumstances. She had people tag teaming her left, right, and center to tell her not to use the veto. You can't use the veto. It'll be terrible if you use the veto. You'll be the target if you use the veto. Everyone coming to her and telling her that. Pushing, 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 pushing. I will. I do feel like that the more they pushed, the more she was like dead set on using it. But mm -hmm. still, that is, that is really tough. She knew that if she used the veto, there was maybe two people in there who were happy that she used the veto, Kevin and David. And that was it. Everyone else was pissed. And so, like, I really feel like that she deserves way bigger credit than mm -hmm. maybe this episode gave her credit for. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I don't, again, the, the amount of pressure that she was feeling in that moment uh, was was absolutely astronomical, Sasha. Like, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, bullshit reasons and the yeah. gaslighting that went on to Davon's face, both, you know, emotionally and game- was uh, almost beyond the pale, in my opinion. And uh, I was really glad in the end that she uh, was able to use the veto. Yeah, also and the I... fact that, well, sorry, I was just going to no. say also the fact that in like most recent seasons, we would have seen the person cave to the yeah. pressure and not use the veto. Mm -hmm. So I think that like, this is like an anomaly. This is shows how strong she is. Like, I mean, this is like miraculous, essentially. Like, I mean, any other season, if the majority Alliance asks the person on the outside, don't use this, like we promise, like we'll do whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. They would be like, oh, okay. I want to be part of the cool guys. Like I want to be part of the in crowd. And they just like do yeah. whatever they Cliff, say. Don't use your power. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And Kevin, right? I don't know if Kevin would have done it for Davon because of exactly what you said, Melissa, mm -hmm. that same pressure, because he wants so bad to be part of this like group, right? Whatever the group is. And that I agree. And to Brent, you, your point, right? You talked about this. They had rehearsed scripts. And then, mm -hmm. and on top of that, um, I, I made this note when I was, uh, the, when we were watching the live feeds was that, they are so mad at Davon for using it. Be and this is what drove me crazy. Danny's, Danny was trying to explain to the allies, um, her team saying, hey, actually, Davon's not wrong in using it. Like, we are going for Kevin. And I mean, the, mm -hmm. the frustration, like, no, but she doesn't know that. With the information that she knows, why is she putting, uh, why is she using the veto? Because we, because what we're telling her is that Kevin is, safe so that's also causing me personally a lot of frustration with these players why isn't she trusting us untrustworthy yes. people <laughs> yeah exactly. that's basically we're lying to yeah. your yeah. face yeah. Yeah, like, we're lying to her face why lying. doesn't she trust us that mm -hmm. shows that we can't trust her anymore. and they were getting mm -hmm. upset about it yeah like, so like frustrated don't get upset like you and I, I feel like they would all at ran at random times be like well but we are like lying to her and then they'd be like, but it's Not crazy that she's, me. well, then they'd turn yeah. it around and be like, but it's crazy that she won't trust us. Like we obviously need to go after Why her. Why won't they like take our counterfeit money? <laughs> That's right? exactly it what looks it is. great. Yeah, exactly. By the way, Sasha, I will say Davon clocked the fact yes. that Kevin last week, if he, he said, if he won the veto, he could not guarantee that he would use it on either Davon or Bailey. So she clocked that to him. She did, again, like I said, she did not let Kevin know that she mm -hmm. was going to use the veto tonight. And I think that, like, there were, I know there was a little part of her that definitely wanted to, like, yeah. <laughs> screw with him because I, I don't, you know what? I agree with you. I don't think that he would have used the veto. If, 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 it, the, if the situation were reversed and Davon was on the block yeah. and Kevin won the veto, I don't think he would have used it. I think he would have folded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would have said, I'll work so hard to keep you day. Like, don't be stressed. Like, I, with his bad, you know, his awful reads, not bad, like whatever is worse than that. Mostly, yeah. Reads. Yeah, he would have been like, you're fine. You're, you're staying. Mm -hmm. Crazy. But 
I feel like Melissa, this is the kind of stuff we were talking about with the old school big brother versus new school big brother. It's like yeah. there would be no doubt that this person is my friend. And I'm gonna take them off the block because I won the veto. And no one would be angry about it. Like mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh darn it. Like we I wish we had won the veto, like but good yep. move. Yep. Now it's like now it's like, wait, I how how like we're telling her we're the majority, we're the majority alliance, and we're telling her not to use it. Like why would she use it? Like, it's just we like, told her not to. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we told her not to. So like, she shouldn't do it, but it's like, don't you see, like there are people playing the game that aren't just playing for you. Like they're playing for themselves, or at least that's the way they should be playing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it really is the, the like dichotomy of old big brother versus new big brother and the different ways of playing. Yeah. That's what we need the wall yeller to say. You're not <laughs> the only ones playing the game. <laughs> so like, wait, there's other house guests somewhere. What? Yeah. 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 In house guests. Okay. So I, I want to uh, get into a little bit for people who have not followed the live feeds closely about the, uh, there was a plan to uh, that. Okay. The only thing we could do is get uh, Davon not to use the veto. We need to come up with an elaborate ruse to trick Davon at the veto meeting. Uh, Sasha, did you have the bullet points on this? Yeah. So they, right. So they just decided that they want to, okay, here's what we're going to do. Y'all. We just have to make sure that I first, Danny wanted to ask production if this was possible. I want to also make that note for everyone wondering. And then they wanted to take the two nominees out and send them to another room, whatever. And then Danny was going to say, can everyone that wants to vote Tyler, Please raise your hand. Vote Tyler out. Out. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 out. they're trying to make a ruse that they're all going to yes. vote Tyler out. So the yeah. two nominees now have left. They leave the Allegedly, room. Allegedly. Right. Yeah. And, and they made a plan. This didn't actually happen, but this yes. is what they wanted to happen. Yeah. And they said, who wants to vote? And then, you know, all these people are going to raise their hands and Davon's going to be like, Kevin's good, y'all. Like, I don't need it. I don't need to use it. And it's fine. We'll keep nominations the same. And like, and really wanting to play with Davon and insult her intelligence. And again, I have so many questions. Like, why are they so selfish? And then two, like, why is this funny to, like, why is this fun or part of their strategy to just be like gross people, right? Like, if you're gonna do it, do it. Just like old school Big Brother, Davon will be like, oh, I got outplayed, got it. She's not gonna sit there and be like, they lied to me, but if you're going to do this whole drama, she will be more angry. And then you can't probably come back from that. Yeah. I love how Memphis was just like, no. um, <laughs> this is bad. Like, this is a bad idea. And everyone was like, Oh, okay. Like I felt like everyone was excited about it. And then Memphis was like, mm, do you really yeah. think this is a good idea? And they were like, no, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, just to fill in some of the details. So Davon yeah. and and and, and uh, Danny had a conversation late at night, the night before the veto ceremony. Uh, Davon heavily hinted to uh, Danny she was going to use the veto. Danny then woke everybody up in her alliance, except for Tyler. Talked about the fact that da that uh, that the veto is going to be used most likely. What are they going to do? They had to come up with a plan. This is their plan. Again, they're they're working in the universe where. Tyler is going to go home and they need to put up a quote unquote pawn on the block. And then I think like uh, grandpa and Memphis left the room and some other mm -hmm. people, like they eventually come up with a plan. Like the, like Sasha talked about to basically gaslight people into thinking, okay, this is what's really happening. They wanted to change the format of the veto ceremony, which yeah. is why fans got pissed because no, never before in a veto ceremony have the nominees been asked to leave the room. So then they said no. So now the nominees have to stay in the room. So now if they want to do this, they have to do it with Tyler and Kevin in the room and basically say to Tyler's face, pretend like they're going to vote each other out. Now, look, I, I, I disagree with Sasha a little bit. I don't have a problem with the fact that they wanted to try this from a strategic level. Uh, if it works, you can make sure the veto isn't used and, you know, move along on your merry way and vote Kevin out. But you're going to have to deal with the consequences. I think optically Memphis... Uh, realized uh, crazily because he's the one who maybe has the least <laughs> awareness whatsoever. Maybe he wanted to not do it for a different reason. He didn't want to do it because he thought it was stupid. Uh, I think uh, Danny had said previously that she didn't want to make Davon look like a fool. Yeah. She actually cares about Davon, although maybe, you know, we don't know so much now. Uh, and uh, like, I feel like overall, like that, whatever uh, emotional intelligence that Davon used during that week to try to get through to Danny. Like some way or another, it worked where they did not try this uh, ghastly scheme mm -hmm. on uh, Davon. And, uh, you know, again, even if they had done this, I think Davon would have been like, that's cute. I'm still using the veto on Kevin. Like, yeah, like, that's she was right. not going to buy. Exactly. She yeah. knew right. something like, was but up. Also, here's the thing is like, 
the, the reason why this doesn't work for me is that like, okay, so they're saying like, look, keep it the same. We all agree that we're going to vote this person out and it's not the person you're trying to save. It's the other person. And it's like, okay, so then what, what does it matter? The problem what does it matter? With me removing this person from the block. Like, you can just put anyone else up. If you're really mm-hmm. going to get this person out, like then why does it matter? And I think that that is the missing link where it's like, okay, yeah, but like, how does that affect me using the veto on this person? Like, Davon said that to Danny in that three hour conversation that they had. Davon ex- said exactly all the right things where she said, so what does it matter if you want to take um, Tyler out? I just need this one number for me. I only have this one. Yeah, so right. I agree. This and if everybody, and if like they're saying, like if everyone raises their hand, it's like, okay, well, okay, then, then we're fine because everyone's agreeing to vote out Tyler no matter what or whatever. Like that's the thing. So what, putting one other person up on the block, like that shouldn't affect it. If we're all on the same page that we're going to get Tyler out. Like it's, it's, I'm so glad Davon like was like, yeah, this, this doesn't yeah, make and Melissa, sense. She was even better than that because let's be clear. Mm-hmm. Sasha, in that meeting that she had with Danny the night before the veto ceremony, she clocked exactly what was going yes. on. She, she knew exactly there's a big alliance, which you saw in the episode, but be, what you didn't see was the fact that Davon said, you know, Danny, I just, I don't know. Like, uh, it seems really weird that, uh, you know, uh, I go up on the block. Me and Bailey go up on the block. No one cares. We're expendable. Kevin goes up on the block. No one cares. David goes up on the block. No one cares. But oh my God, Cody Calafiore goes up on the block. <gasps> Nicole Franzel goes up on the block. <gasps> Enzo goes up on the block. <gasps> like, I mean, what, what is, do you see, like, look at the people you're describing and tell me that I don't see what I see. Mm-hmm. And Danny was like, uh, hubbin, 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 hubbin. Like she had no words for that. So I think Davon knew exactly what was going on here. And uh, even if even if the house guests who are in control don't, don't know what's going on, yeah. Davon knew what was going on. Exactly. And I want to give Day all the credit because, you know, when you're in an argument with someone and sometimes you like an hour later, you're like, oh, I should have said that. That is not Davon. She is exactly the person you want when you're, you know, on your side in an argument because she laid everything out. Every time Danny was coming up with some ridiculous so proud of her. Yeah. excuse, I think like exactly what we would say on Twitter, right? For someone that has been watching all the, like the game and the live feeds, we'd say, oh, blah, blah, blah. This is what you should say. And Day was saying it. And it's just, this is exactly why she deserves all the props for this episode that I don't think she necessarily got in the edit, at least. Yeah, okay. she didn't get any of that in the edit. Ultimately, Davon will use her tiny veto <laughs> and she will take Kevin. How dare you, Rob? Off the How block. dare you? Yes. And uh, Ian will be the replacement nominee. Uh, again, uh, Nicole is very sad. So sad. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's very so sad. sad. Very sad. But Ian uh, has to go up on the block and Ian's not sad. Ian is enraged. I'm just enraged. Like, how stupid can she be? Look. Oh. <laughs> did what happened there? What, what happened? Did, what did, did it kick Ian, over? There's a little Ian table. <laughs> not go. He knocked over furniture in the diary room. Uh, yeah. Like, look. I, I. I saw. We've seen. I saw this Ian on BB14. That mm-hmm. little boy has a temper on him. He's got a bigger temper than I do. He really like when he <laughs> things don't go his way. He is pissed. I remember yeah. how hard he went at uh, Frank when uh, Brittany got backdoored and how angry he was with Frank walking around the goddamn carrot. <laughs> yeah. Ian is enraged. I'm just he really enraged. Like how stupid can he be? I like yes. the no- the sound effects too, like at least the noise of the table being knocked over. It's just like exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's oh, fun man. when Ian gets like. I love it when Ian's like that. It's like the best kind of Ian. He finally mm-hmm. has a pulse. We love it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, finally. which I mean, maybe too late, but we'll see. Mm. Ooh, okay. Tea. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll uh take some questions and then we'll talk about where we stand uh with with this vote. Uh, a- any thoughts on Ian's point to this game, uh, Brett? I don't want to steal your thunder for the uh stock watch but i saw that you uh were very critical of ian's game to this point 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, what, what uh, Rob's referring to is, uh, you know, Taryn was talking about uh, how he's bummed that uh, Ian's off on the block. And, you know, he might if, if he goes out here, you know, he really hasn't had a chance to, to play yet. And of course, I'm paraphrasing what Taryn said. So don't come for me. But <laughs> I was I responded a little catty. Uh, and uh, T- Taryn, to his credit, responded a little catty back. But it's cool. Like, uh, yeah, you, we, you we love been, each other. That he deserves to lose for uh, playing the game he's played. And- yeah, for Playing like crap. And, and Karen didn't realize it was you. He thought it was a troll. He thought it was Twitter. a troll. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. like, I thought you were a troll before I looked at the username. Now I know you're a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I, I love that comment. That was great. And I hearted it. Um, so here's what I'm talking about. I feel like that Ian has played very sleepily uh, this season. Uh, he has not really tried to insulate himself. Obviously, he had the prime or a prime four, core four. four prime. Like, Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. It's like it's such a fake alliance. I don't even remember it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like... Uh, I, I I really feel like once he got that little taste of, okay, we're together and they never even really like hooked up, met, like talked about the Alliance much after that, maybe a little bit, but not a lot. Like he just went to sleep. He's like, Oh, I'm good now. I got Nicole. <laughs> like he, he, and it, like, it's really infuriating because like, uh, honestly, you know, you guys know I'd rather Tyler go home this week, but Ian is the one who I think is more likely to come after Dave on because he, he's just being incredulous right now. He doesn't yeah. know where to aim his fire because he hasn't been playing well. Ian, like we talk about Dave on and Kevin's reads, Ian's reads, equally bad the only read that ian got right this season is the one that the wall yeller yelled over to him and he went in to tell the house that is it because other than that he couldn't read a phone book he doesn't know exactly where the where the power is he doesn't know who's in control and that's why i'm happy in some ways to, to see him go home look I, I didn't want him to go home but here's the thing you got to play the big brother game that's in front of you not the game that you want to play and mm-hmm. that's the thing that happened to caser when he was evicted and ian needs to mold the game that he wants to play and i just feel like he was willing he was so willing to play other people's form of big brother which is not the big brother that he uh won with it's not the girl that brought him to the dance and that's why i have a problem with the way he's played this season i thought you were gonna say that ian hasn't had a good read since dirk space jammer (laughs) yeah (laughs) right Ian hasn't had a good read since he uh, uh, didn't realize he was the pawn in uh, the double eviction in uh, BB14, and he oh. thought he was uh, he thought he was totally safe, and then won the veto anyway. And obviously, he was the target. So, yeah, Ian Ian's not good at reading. He's good at playing, but not reading. I just don't understand how he could go from like really like clocking the whole house and like everyone being like, "Oh my God, Ian's got it," to like this. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me because I thought that like okay, so he had his read on the house then. He lo- didn't get power, and I felt like he kind of just was like, like groveling at Nicole's feet, mm-hmm. being like, "I'm so sorry," because he basically got found out and was just like, "I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." Like, take me back. Like, it was all just a lie. Like, I didn't believe any of it. Like, blah blah blah. But, and I thought that was just an act. Like, I literally, I thought that no, he it was wasn't. just like yeah. just pretending so that way they like would take him back into their arms until <laughs> he could get power again. But it just seems to me that like. That's not the case. He actually is like, oh, I guess I was wrong about the whole read. And now he's just like doing Nicole's bidding again or just like kind of thinking he's safe for no reason. Like now I think he's, I mean, now I think he thinks he might be on the way out because they called him a like a super pawn or whatever, which he is not a super pawn. Ultimate pawn. The yeah, ultimate pawn. Like he is not that at all. And he that's knows gotta be that. a big tell, right? Yeah, he knows <laughs> yeah. that. He knows, like, okay, wait, but like I don't have relationships with everyone in the house. Like Someone who has relationships with everyone in the house should would be the ultimate pawn, not me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think really honestly, I think the only way that Ian stays this week is if Nicole makes it happen. Yeah. I don't think that anything that Ian does is going to make it happen besides possibly get convincing Devon and David and Kevin to vote to keep him. And then Nicole either gives a sympathy vote or he convinces Nicole, like, please just like, like keep me around. I'll be your like number one ally, whatever. Then it's four and four. And maybe Danny decides to keep him. Mm -hmm. But I I think really, honestly, I think we need Nicole here to be the one to get Ian to stay and campaign on his behalf. Otherwise he's also, yeah, I I will say that the best thing going for Ian is that it's only Tuesday night. (laughs) He's got 48 hours. Normally this would be Wednesday night. Yeah. Normally we're like, uh, it's tomorrow. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot. You know, a lot can change in twenty-four hours, but a whole lot can change in forty-eight hours. And look, it does seem like Nicole usually gets what she wants. So I think Ooh. if she wants Ian to stay, I think he'll stay. She, so. she has at every point this season. Yeah. So let's see it happen again, girl. Yeah. yeah okay. If she can get, if she can make this happen, 
I'll be very impressed because I'm not super impressed right now. And I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to give her a great, as great of a um, score in the stock. Uh -oh, watch insider tomorrow. trading. Insider, insider trading. trading. Right in down, yeah. But yeah. here's the thing is that I'm not going to give her a good score because I think this was a really bad move on her part. Mm -hmm. She should have convinced Danny to not put up Ian. This is very bad for her. There's no benefit to this, to, to Nicole on this. So I think the, the only way she'll go up again is if she can convince everyone to get, uh, to keep Ian. Yeah. Okay. By the way, no matter who goes out on Thursday night, uh, we will have exit press uh, this week, but it will be a little bit different than uh, what we've done with the pre-jury members. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be uh, sending in our questions, and then we jury will buyback. get we will get <laughs> video we will get video of the contestants answering our questions. Oh. Uh, like, in the past, we've just gotten it in text believe we will uh, get video of people answering our questions. The key is if Julie talks about the committee in yeah, the exit interview, we'll on that. they'll be going home. But if they, if she doesn't talk about the committee, we have a jury buyback. Okay. It's very possible. All right. Let's take some questions from our listeners. Katie says by a show of hands, how many of the panelists would turn down over 50 K to go hang out with Angela instead. Well, what kind of question is what kind of question is this? <laughs> instead of what? Do the podcast? Shady. Uh, well, Does like somebody a, have to no. leave the room before we answer this question? What? I'll go. I'll leave. I'll leave. So what they're yeah, referring what, are, what are you to, getting at, what, Katie? What Katie is referring to is the fact that both of the nominees mm -hmm. this week have said that if they are evicted, that they're not going to go to jury, that they're going to leave. And so Tyler specifically was the first one, obviously, to talk about this. When he got put up, he was talking about how he thought he was going to be going home if he didn't win the veto. And he wasn't going to stay in jury. He just wanted to let everybody know that he's going to go. Well, home let me get Angela. this straight. Yes. If I stay where I am, I get 50K. If I go visit Angela, I lose it? Correct. Yeah. I think I'll probably stay. I right? think too. Yeah. Stay. Stay. She's fine. She's <laughs> fine. But I'd rather have the, have the 50K. She's fine. She got the FBI looking She's after her. She's not my Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, this is a question from Rad. Do you think that Kevin would have used the veto on day if the tables were turned? And what would he say? No. No, no, no ma'am. No, nope. got no spine, spine less. Okay. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Uh, Caleb says, oh was it God. unfair <laughs> for the prize for Davon's first competition win after three seasons to Come be the on. tiniest veto necklace bracelet ever? You know, I thought it was adorable. Yeah. If it didn't work, that would be not fair. It's <laughs> not the size of the veto. It's what you do with it. Thank you. Right, Brent? Yes, that's what I've heard. Uh, yes. Look, also, no tea, but uh, like this was way more memorable. Like, when, like exactly. it, the, the thing about Big Brother, it's about moments. You know, we don't remember Davon because she was the second person evicted from uh, uh, Big Brother's uh, 17. Sorry, I just want to make sure I got it right. Big Brother 17. When she was evicted second on Big Brother 17, we don't remember that. It's the fact that when she came out the door, she did the whoo like that, you know, and then like walked over to Julie and she was obviously amazing in the diary room and obviously got into a fight with a few of the house guests. Like that's what we remember. Big Brother's about moments. So the fact that she got a tiny veto, who cares? It's all the more memorable and people will remember this moment far far more when they, they than they will some random golden yeah. power of veto that, uh, that she would have gotten. Let's not veto shame people. Okay. <laughs> yes. Some people have oh tiny vetoes. Some people have regular size vetoes. Some people, Brent, have bigger vetoes. Yes. It's fine. Yes. All sizes matter, y'all. Period. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's take another question. Proud Min says, We are halfway through Big Brother 22, and the big alliance has remained intact. Will the season get more entertaining when the alliance members are left? Or is there already a pecking order? Okay. All right. We've gotten to this point and we've said, okay, well, the big alliance is going to start attacking each other. Melissa, but do we already know how the big alliance is going to go out? Do we already know that order? Yeah, I mean, probably yes. I think there is the chance that, I mean, it really depends on who wins the competitions at that point. So it really could go any way. I think like if they have their way, it will go a certain way. But I think mm -hmm. that, you can never really predict it with the competition wins. So, yeah, I mean, I think I, I can answer this more in the spoiler section. Uh, but uh, like, I, I feel like that uh, some people have their in their mind about what they want to have happen, and uh, some of the ramifications of this week are going to impact what happens in the following weeks. So, uh, like, you know, probably uh, probably a question we can answer a little bit more in depth right. later. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
uh this is a uh do we have another question or are we ready to go to spoilers i guess we're ready to go to okay uh, anna says so the pov comp storyline apparently involved the mad scientist making contestants giant in order to stack beer no Please no no any of those things are connected we have brett okay tell me the story oh whoa, 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 wait no yeah maybe that's right because they did zap them. yeah they zapped them with, uh, but maybe they transported them to like a, a tiny universe or something. That's I what I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that it's, it's a like, teleporter, right? Yeah. It's like aliens visiting, right? And this area that we're visiting happen that we just happened to be like the big people in that area is yeah. what happened. Okay. I'm not it's, sure. too, it's too complicated. It was what, cute. What that's happens? all you need it's to know. Vetoes. Did y'all hear Nick's and uh, 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 Nicole talk Nick about macaroni? Oh my God. <laughs> Nicole talk about the drinking game. Um, she said you can make a drinking game to every time a tiny beer um falls <laughs> down, you should take a sip. I yeah. that's what we should be doing. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. That was a, I do agree with Melissa. I I really like that competition. Uh like I know part of it's the fact that it's COVID it's and they're yeah, different. The, yeah, it's, it's smaller, but that was very fun and getting give everybody a chance to win. Like Davon's not gonna win a running competition against Tyler going to pick up blocks or V, you know, Otev or whatever, but she can win something like this. That's the mm -hmm. thing is, I think, at least in my opinion, I think Big Brother competition should not be about physical ability. I think that's like a survivor thing. I don't yep. think that's a Big Brother thing, a Big Brother thing. And that's like one of the reasons why I had always wanted to be on Big Brother instead of Survivor was like, number one, you're not in the like wilderness and you're <laughs> in a house and you have food and bathroom and Same. everything. And number two, <laughs> number two, it's like maybe I could have a chance at these competitions because it's not about your physique it's just about like these it's random sometimes and it just like it, who's that whoever's good at stacking teeny beers with a like big giant set of tweezers like that's the kind of thing that i think there should be more of and like same with like even when it's like a, an endurance competition mm -hmm. in my mind it should be an endurance competition of like who was willing to stay out there the longest because they want it, not because they can necessarily hang on a wall for the longest. Like mm -hmm. I think that you like want the pressure, pressure cooker, cooker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've said it over and over and I yeah. will literally like yeah. this point to the ground. They need to bring back the pressure cooker. That is like one of the like best competitions maybe if somebody in Big Brother history could maybe do some sort of a, a video to uh, to remind people of how great <laughs> pressure cooker was maybe somebody maybe there's somebody yeah, the I right wonder. person is out there that could that could reenact the pressure cooker i wonder who that might be yeah hmm. i don't know okay all right let's talk about our spoilers as we get ready for our vote uh two nights away if you were going to be jumping out here uh, of course the lc round table is gonna be back on a wednesday night but if you don't like spoilers you probably don't like the lc round table until after the eviction but anyway it's there 9 p.m eastern tomorrow and then we'll be live after the eviction show at 9 15 p.m so hope you can join us there on thursday night but in the meantime let's talk about our spoilers the Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. Spoilers! 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 So, uh, so, uh, like, well, there's no other way to say it. Look, you guys, it's not looking good for Ian. It's really not. Uh, they're, they're trying to hoodwink him and they're this trying to hoodwink. This has been raging. Yeah. I'm just enraged. Like, how stupid can you be? <laughs> so the funny part is that Ian does not watch Big Brother anymore. You guys remember that Ian used to be a part of the Thursday night. Well, he's really not going to like it now. I know, right? <laughs> uh, well, uh, but his mom does. Okay. And his mom told Ian that Tyler is one of the best Big Brother players ever to play the game. And so Ian has brought that with him into the house. And he's telling people like, hey, if you guys are actually dumb enough to evict me, my mom watches the show religiously. And she tells me that Tyler, and he's not wrong about this, is one of the best players to ever play mm -hmm. Big Brother, especially when he like is actually trying Want to play to. the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, if you evict me, like four weeks from now, Tyler's going to be in the final two chairs and you all are going to look back at this and shake your head while you're sitting in jury with me. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I do not believe that that has, uh, manifested because what's happening right now is there, uh, as, as, uh, Taryn pointed out, there are basically three, 
groups in the house. There's a big alliance, but there's basically two groups within that. And then obviously the the Davon, Kevin, mm-hmm. uh, David group. And the crazy part is that all three groups currently right now, is last time I looked, plan on evicting Ian. Uh, David, who, again, his reads are so terrible, uh, <laughs> believes that Ian is a part of the in crowd and yeah. that Ian is helping them win. And that Ian is a little mole that is talking with the other side and pretending like he's not in with the cool kids and that he, Ian can actually win competitions. Keep in mind, he actually hasn't won anything and, and that he's a strategist and that they need to get rid of him. They, they think, oh, well, Tyler's only a comp beast. And I'm like, what do you mean only a comp beast? He's also a great strategist as mm-hmm. well. Like just because Ian's a little bit more nerdy doesn't mean that he's a better strategist than, yeah. than Tyler. Uh, also, I so think Ian's kind snowed. of Ian's kind of perpetuating that because he's basically making he thinks he is part of like a core group. So mm-hmm. I think That's that true. he's like trying he's basically not going to tell anyone like, no, I'm on the outs. I have nobody like, please like keep me around. He doesn't which know is that what he mm-hmm. needs to be saying, but like he doesn't know that he's on the outs. So he's, he's just acting as if he's like part of the group. And if I'm on the outs and that he's not coming to you, I would think that he is part of the group. Like that I would absolutely be convinced that he's part of the group. So he's really not doing himself any favors, unfortunately. Yeah. Sasha, what does Tyler have to do to get people to vote him out of this house? Whatever he's doing right now. I think, again, like he, he, he Cody... He campaigned for himself to get voted out last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's up on the block this week. What, what is with these people? No, like, no, I, no we can't let go of Tyler. We need someone. Him. Someone put that on Twitter, right? Like, who is going to raise your hand to um, evict Tyler? And Tyler is going to be the first one to raise his hand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and Tyler I think, joked that if he was in the room, he would have right, raised his hand, right? Exactly. And that's why I think this is so funny because I think now Tyler is all of a sudden saying, "Well, now that I'm in jury, I don't want to go to the house. So now I'm going to play again." And you know the like chutzpah, right? To like be able to do that to say, "Well, I didn't want to play last week, but I want to play this week." So this week, I think he's doing really well where he's um where day and david believe that they should keep him um because he is you know like on the outs and he is going to go for danny which again he also solidified that um with danny to say let's like work with each other on the side you know like it's fine that you put me up and he has cody and memphis and enzo kind of like pulling maybe not enzo i think enzo's kind of going back and forth but Cody and Memphis for sure that are like, you know, Tyler, like he's our guy. He wins competitions. I think that's his biggest strategy is that I win competitions. I got you. Yeah. And and it's also a massive shield in front of them. That's Mm -hmm. the thing. I think that Cody would particularly feel naked if uh, uh, Tyler wasn't there anymore, uh, even though he's used to that sometimes. But uh, overall, I feel like he was used to being naked. Yeah, well, you know, like uh, he's uh, oh, I, I'm That's sorry, his That's brother. His brother. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forget. <laughs> I, they, you know, one brother, you've seen them all, so uh, don't come for me. Like, uh, but he does, like, he's still got a good body, Rob. That's and, his like, veto. Yeah, his veto's pretty good, as <laughs> yeah. I recall from yeah. like, when the, I saw the pictures on BB16. All right, all right, out. stay on target. All right, all right, yes. Uh, so look, overall, I feel like Ian's in trouble and he needs help, but the problem is he doesn't know mm-hmm. that he needs help. I feel like he's hey. slowly discovering this. But by the time he, f- he figures it out, it might be too late. I, I agree with Melissa that, N- that Nicole is the person who must do something. Mm-hmm. But in order for Nicole to do this, she actually has to want to do it. And she's been slapped down by Cody and Danny to say, you know, look, don't try to keep Ian here. you got to evict Tyler because that'll upset Memphis and Christmas again. Who cares about them? Yeah. Who cares? Like, like, like Nicole actually has relationships with people like Davon. She doesn't have much of a relationship with somebody like Memphis, for God's sake. But uh, like, they're gonna get their way this week. It looks like. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other thing I want to point out that uh, the ramifications of this week that I think going into this week and even in the middle part of the week that Tyler would have gone after Danny if he stayed in the house. I no longer believe that. I think if Tyler wins HOH on Thursday, he will go right back after Kevin and Davon and put them up on the block, and it will not be fun. So I think no matter which way you slice it, whoever stays this week... Why? Going, Why do you feel like that Tyler's targets are because, Davon and Kevin? Because by putting up Ian on the block, they feel like that that has weakened Danny's side, which Danny weakened her own little group of people. Ian was part of her group with Nicole. She has effectively weakened her side. I feel like that the people who were previously looking at Danny, like Enzo and Tyler, are concerned now that... The Bay Day, uh, Bay Day, the Day David Kevin group 
is more powerful than Danny's group. And since they just lost a number in Ian, you know, assuming this timeline goes through and they mm -hmm. are more threatened by that because they know that all three of those people, or at least two of the three, maybe not David in their eyes, but definitely Kevin and, and Dave on would put two of them up on the block if they won HOH. So uh, I, like the thing that, that really, I'll just, I just want to rant for like 30 more seconds because the, the, the thing that pisses me off about going into this week is that the people of color, we're not working together. Okay. Did y'all hear that? They were not working together. Devon hated David. She wanted him out of the house. She wanted to get rid of him. But because of the play of the other players in the house, like Memphis, Christmas, and Cody, they have pushed the people of color to come together. So now, yes, Day is working with David and trusts him more. Now she is working with Kevin and trusts him more. But it wasn't that way going into this week. And if people come out of this saying, oh, look, the people of color are all working together. It's not because they wanted to. It's because you guys pushed them together and made it happen. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it just pissed me off because Rob, you know, these trolls on Twitter say that they say it in the chat, like, Oh, you know, like Devon's just going to protect uh, David and uh, Kevin. And we know why. And, but mm -hmm. like, she wouldn't have done that four days ago. If she won HOH four days ago. She would have put up David and said, get rid of him. I can't stand the guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now she's like, he's probably all I have left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and they voted out Bailey. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, it's a, is there anything that you think Ian can do or do you think this only is rests on Nicole Franzel? I think I I think Ian can do something to influence Nicole and then Nicole can make some moves or maybe he could talk to Danny and Nicole. Um I also think there's a possibility that he can talk to uh Day and Kevin and David and get them to keep him. Um I don't know if he would do that because he is going around saying that Devon is his target. I don't know if that's actually his target or if that's just something he's saying. Um, mm -hmm. But he is saying that. And I, I think that if he went to the three of them, went to Nicole, and then Nicole and Ian maybe, or just Nicole, went to Danny and said, like, look, we have to keep him, then – he could stay, but I think that I don't think there's any way he goes to like Memphis or Cody or anyone mm -hmm. like that and convinces them because there's no way they've been wanting him out, especially Memphis. So that's not happening. Yeah. Um, and Christmas, you think Christmas is going to vote out Tyler? No. I think Cody's mm -hmm. going to vote out Tyler? No. So I think that it's a lost cause over there. I think the only people he can convince are the outsiders and Nicole. So I yeah, know. I think if it, it lies with Nicole and uh, the three people on the outside looking in, and they have mm -hmm. to like, but see, that's such a difficult road. They, they're, we, we're wanting them to play the game that they do not want to play. Mm -hmm. Danny does not want to have to break a tie. She mm -hmm. does not want to do that. She does not want to. She does not want to play big moves, Danny. She okay, but let's just say it moves. happens. Let's yeah. just let's just talk it through. Is, right. is it a moot point? Uh, if Nicole flips, puts all that pressure on Danny. All right, Danny, stand up in front of the house, look towards Ian and Tyler, and cast your vote to evict. Is there a chance that Danny would ev evict Tyler in that spot? I, I mean, think there's a chance if Nicole can get to her before yeah. then. I think if it's a surprise tie, I think that she would just vote out Ian because she wouldn't want the alliance coming after her. But I think that, I think that, it's the smarter move for her to vote out Tyler because, okay, well, you know, then she has Ian and Nicole's happy to her and she has, you know, whoever else who voted for Ian to stay happy to her. And then you've got, you know, like the other people, I think she can, I think she can make the case that like, look, I'm sorry I did this, but like I was put on the spot and I know that Tyler was coming after me last week. I wasn't convinced he wasn't coming after me this next week. I just had to make this move and I'm sorry or whatever. And mm -hmm. I think that people wouldn't linger on that and be like, well, now number one target is Danny. I think that they still have other targets, number one. And number two, like even if they didn't have other targets, they were going to come after her anyway. So it doesn't matter. Like I don't think it really changes her position. I think that maybe people think she's not as easily manipulated, but like, I mean, okay, so what? I, I just think it's, I, I really so, think it's a bad move. Two things. Number one, I think Danny's going to play again on Thursday. She has that power. It's only available for one more week. And she, if she doesn't use it, she can't be HOH the next week. So I feel like she's going to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not she wants to win 
HOH is a different story. I feel like she actually might want to win HOH. And uh, she's not happy with Davon right now. She's kind of mad yeah. that Davon, she's, mm -hmm. Danny's mad that Davon has never apologized to her. Again, how entitled are these fucking people? It really pisses me off. She is mad that Davon has not apologized to her for using the power that Davon won in the veto. So uh, they're not feeling each other right now. And uh, I mean, like on the outside, they're like, oh yeah, we're cool. But like, it's like, you know they're not. Mm -hmm. And if one of them gets yeah. power, it's definitely it's definitely curtains for somebody. Sasha, what about outside of the vote? Anything interesting going on these days? Danny's doing a lot of like studying up. I don't know if y'all saw that with the couches. For comps? Yeah, for comps, right? Be uh the production even got mad at her. Studying the couches? Uh, she's sorry, she's using the couch cushion as like a um paper and she's literally writing down days on it which i thought was really interesting that's why oh, it scratching it with a fingernail mm -hmm. it's a suede cow like a velvet yeah, you, couch, can make, so. you can make letters in it yeah yeah, like, yeah. So Brent, that's why I thought she was going to play because I think she's either she's just, you know, prepping for later on. But I thought that since she's doing all of this, like, are you going to play um, this game, uh, play the next HOH because she's going hard and studying right. so much? Mm. Yeah, it's going to be an important HOH. Like for mm -hmm. real, if Davon, uh, Kevin or David does not win HOH. I feel like two of the three of them will be up on the block on uh Friday afternoon and mm. there's no power that can save them this time unless they introduce something. Hopefully, look, I have heard through the grapevine that perhaps, uh, you know, like again, they're out of competitions. They don't have anything. So uh, maybe a, a, a fan vote. Uh, I have heard, pray, I have heard, pray Wait, tell of. Hold on, on Brent. Yes, let's, yes, uh, yes. Let, let's just, okay, put a point on what you're trying to say here. Oh, you have, you, your yes. sources are telling me. No, 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 I, make it, I, I want to, this is like, this has no validity in, uh, this is like a, a Brent chance. premonition. No, uh, this is like from a, <laughs> from an account or two that, uh, has been right about a few things that were off, but like, is wrong about a lot of stuff. They have talked about the fact that CBS uh, and and Grodner want to perhaps do a fan vote for the next week. Uh, that uh, there's so no there's, they're out there's of no competition. Co yes. but because they're out of competition ideas. Yes, yeah, they, which they did during the uh, twenty one. They had that mm -hmm. uh, what was it called? I forget. But they had a fan vote or something. Uh, I could well, see them we wanting to have a fan like vote. Yeah. yeah, but it seems weird that they're out of competitions. No, well, I mean like. Again, uh, it's not my rumor. It's somebody else's rumor. I'm just like, I'm hoping that this person actually... And it would be what? America's HOH? Like, I would... I, I, I don't know what it would be, but uh, I'm not even sure if I trust America to get it right. Yeah, I'm not totally the honest. casual. Yeah. <laughs> the track record is spotty. The track yeah. record is spotty. It's easier if you go you... on Facebook uh, and look at the comments, you will not be happy. Yeah, it's just saying that. I'll say this. It's easier to get the people... Like, it's easier to get people to vote against people. It's very yeah. hard to get people to vote for somebody like usually when they're voting for somebody it's usually like some you know benign random person like nicole or somebody you know oh, so uh i will I know, say right? though that i asked my mom before the podcast like and she's a casual viewer she doesn't watch the live feeds um i asked her like what are your thoughts like who are you rooting for and she said day all the way that's what she Yay! said she said Thank cody you, Mama. she yeah. said cody and enzo and memphis need to get like I mean, they need to be knocked off their horses or whatever that she said. Like she basically said that like they are getting everything handed to them and she yeah. like, wants something to happen. So that way someone on the outside wins something or does something. She hadn't watched the episode um, when Davon mm -hmm. wins. They're actually watching it downstairs right now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and I'm hearing a lot of noise about them cheering and stuff. So, you know, all I'm saying is that I do think there are casual fans. I don't think that the Facebook casual fan uh is necessarily representative of the people who are casual fans right. and aren't commenting on facebook like my mom who uh <laughs> is rooting for davon so yeah yeah cool well it, look if it happens like uh we'll be happy but uh Hopefully, you know, okay. I don't, I don't know. I, I like, I, uh, maybe I shouldn't even say stuff like that, but uh, like, no, I, I, well, look, I, I, I like when we get it on the record and, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. and, like, and then if, if it happens then you could do a big victory lap and yes, it doesn't happen, yes. we say, Brent, what happened? Uh, yes, exactly. If, if, and if it doesn't happen, like, uh, I, I, I don't, It'll I don't happen know on the challenge. About. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a, okay. that, hey, right. that happened with Amber. I called that's, Amber on this season. That's She's what like, I, you're picking I up know. what I'm putting down. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's take some more uh, questions. Uh, is it just me or would it be really stupid for Danny and Nicole to let Ian go and keep Tyler? Tyler's coming after Danny as soon as next week. And Ian was not putting either of them up. Uh, it's not yeah. just you. No. It's not just you. <laughs> yeah. It would be stupid. 
Yeah. We stay with dumb AF. Okay. All right. Here's a question from Doom Tribe. How many micro brews will it take to uh, get uh, drunk? It's Melissa for the BB22 <laughs> recap. Uh, Melissa, what? There's what so did, small. Yeah. What did you drink when you did your drunk history? Oh god. Oh my god. I drank too much. It was awful. The next day, I was. It what was were you awful. drinking? I like spent the night in the bathroom, like just laying on the floor. Oh, um, no. But yeah, it, like was it, it was it hard kombucha? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I drank I drank tequila and then I had a, a little bit of wine and I used the wine glass as like a prop. But yeah, it was a uh, it was a night. The prop and, is cute. Yeah. You know, looking back at it, like uh, it was a it's a very funny video and it's very yes. funny to watch it. But like um, at the time, or like at the time, it was fun. Then that evening, not so fun. Next day, really not so fun. Really but, not yeah. so fun. It yeah. was yes. worth it. Next yeah. time, Melissa, you need one of Brent's Gatorades uh, to help, <laughs> yeah, uh, pick me up, yeah. hydrate me. If you yes, left hungover. Exactly. Uh, so the chat reminded me. Oh, sorry, before we take one more question, that uh, Memphis apparently is waking up. Grandpa is uh, trying to uh, make a, a bit of an end game for himself and create uh, a couple different groups. Be careful when you wake up, Memphis. I know, oh, right? Uh, with uh, ironically. I think he wants to name them the same name. I don't mm -hmm. think he named that it. happened today. Yeah, he hasn't named them yet, but uh, like he wants to create two groups and and take uh, Christmas to the end. I would too, uh, but uh, I, I I don't uh, I don't I don't think it's happened yet though. So we'll keep an eye on that. So okay, so that he has an end game and involves yeah, and going it's not, with and it's not the committee. Like he says, so I think it's with like Christmas. Enzo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Enzo? Yeah, Enzo mm -hmm. and Christmas and maybe. In Christmas and somebody else or Enzo and somebody else. Yeah, I think yeah. it's him and Enzo are like the final two. And then they have a final three with two other people. Enzo, we'll talk about somebody that's covered all the way around. Yes. Enzo, uh, there's no way he should win HOH on Thursday night. Unless, yeah, it actually gets literally handed to him. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, By America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Oh my God! Like that that could happen. Uh, I I I I would really fear for him if he won HOH because he's mm -hmm. got his hands at every cookie jar. Mm -hmm. But he's really playing well. I'm so really well. impressed with Enzo. Okay. All right. Let's take another question. This is from Mackenzie. How long will the show carry on a narrative <laughs> that Enzo is not any alliances and is on the outside of the power structure? <laughs> do the editors watch the show? Yeah, we talked about this the other night of like, uh, how do they square this circle of the, the committee? Like they started to like trying to do like the Mandela effect and start to like squeeze him in the committee in montages, but they didn't do that tonight when they talked about the committee. Yeah, I feel like they're just so set on the committee because it's the easiest narrative that they're just like, once once it gets down to it and Enzo's like doing really well, they're going to like somehow have to do like a some sort of segment where there's like a montage of like, there's like a montage of him like talking to each person yeah. and like we're working together or whatever and just like somehow make it like that. But I mean, if Enzo... If Enzo like makes it to the end, they're gonna have a hard time trying to create a narrative that he's like a good <laughs> player, which he is a good player and he's doing a great job. But it's just so like it's intricate and it's under the radar that there's just it's really hard to put it on the show in a simplified way, especially because he's not really doing much of any like big moves. Yeah, it's or more subtle. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just really subtle. I will and say. If you are watching any football on CBS this weekend, <laughs> Enzo did get a lot of FaceTime. Sasha, did you see any of this? A little bit. Not too much, though. It, I was watching the Sooners, you know, okay. so college football. Yeah, the, Well, the commercial for Big Brother where they, they just it was like they had a card and then it was just like Enzo in confessional. Talk about, OK, yo, so when you lie, you got to lie to get out of the lie. So they don't know that you're lying, yo. <laughs> it's like uh, B CBS, Big Brother. So they're they really they're like, this Enzo guy will appeal to sports fans. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was going to say. But I think that it's not because Enzo is a mastermind. It's that who's watching football yeah. and who's going to get them. Maybe we'll get five viewers to Big Brother and it's going to be go Enzo. for like Nicole or something like, I don't know, guys. Like, <laughs> there's no way. There's like mm -hmm. absolutely no way that they're like, wait, what's right. this no! show? <laughs> Freaking her in her cereal well. box or whatever. And they're, she's just like, oh, guys, come watch Big Brother. Yeah, Doctor. I noticed like, they gave her like a 10 second segment tonight to get her costume. She knows off. what that she's was... doing. To, she's going to like, I'm so, uh, I'm free. And she jumps in the pool. Right. She's like, now they got to uh -huh. use it. Yeah. yeah. No. She's playing the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk about something else. Uh, oh, so uh, something else to note is that uh, 
you know, the, uh, for those of you who didn't listen to our previous coverage, uh, the house guests got in trouble, uh, depending on who you believe, like uh, insofar as how much from the diary room about making fun of Ian, because Ian has uh, mm-hmm. been honest about the fact that he's on the spectrum. He's autistic. Yeah. And uh, they some house guests, Memphis and Christmas, especially uh, I'm sorry, Memphis and uh, Danny had some things to say about him. Uh, and Nicole was definitely in the room and laughing about it when it was happening. I think they all got a little bit of a talking to from the diary room. Since that time, there was a point in time where Danny wouldn't even consider putting up Ian. Eventually, she came around to the fact that she's going to put up Ian because, frankly, it was the best thing for her game, uh, at least so she thought at the time. Uh, and then now there, she's in a circumstance where she may ultimately lose him. But overall, like, uh, I, 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 I Sorry, I've lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Like, I, I was, we don't know. Oh, no, the edit. Oh, the edit. Yeah, yeah Ian, Ian in the, I'm sorry. Yes, Ian in the edit. And mm-hmm. uh, Ian, like, uh, overall, Nicole is uh, making a little bit of a mistake in terms of uh, losing Ian because you have to consider the thing that, that a lot of people don't talk about is the fact that there's only two winners in the house. And if he goes, she's down to one. And I have mm. to believe that's not going to put her in a good position. And, and, like, up until this week, I really liked Nicole's play. Mm-hmm. Really, like, grudgingly, I was like, like, She's really good. She's really good. But uh, I, I I definitely think that she dropped the ball this week. And then yeah. I could see a situation where like Cody wins HOH and he is like, or even like Memphis or Enzo. And it's like, she doesn't really have that sort of sway with them that it's like, well, you know, Ian's, she's got to lose Ian at some point. And maybe this is the week, but this is Danny. We're talking about like Danny and Nicole are supposed to be like, like this, like working together. Like, she should be able to tell Danny, like, hey, don't do this. This is bad for us. Like, we need to keep Ian. And it just seems like she's kind of just, like, let him go too early. Yeah, and and I remember what I was going to say. The fact that she's looking at the cameras basically saying, Mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't want to vote Ian out. Are you looking at me? Like, even though, like, she knows, like, they're really putting pressure on her. She was talking by herself in the the backyard. Mm -hmm. I'm so frustrated. I want to cry. This is performance art. Mm-hmm. It really was. It, it I'm not. I'm not kidding. She knows she's by herself. She she's guessing the camera's probably on her because she's causing a scene. So she wants everybody to see how much she loves Ian and how much she did not partake in any of the bullying and the the smack talk uh, that was uh, happening uh, the other night on the feeds. And also, uh, but we she, all saw it, Nicole. Sorry. She's the thing here is is that like I could I could see a situation where it's like. She's really sad that she has to vote out her ally like that, you know, whatever. But she's actively making sure that Ian doesn't have enough votes to make a tie. So that way she can be the one to give the sympathy vote. Like that Mm -hmm. way she can give a completely safe sympathy vote. And it's just so dumb. Melissa, it's so dumb. Well, it's dumb, but also it's like it's it's actively acting against Ian and like that he'll know that that happened. Well, yeah, and I'm not just talking about that, though. It's the fact that when Ian goes to jury, like, let's assume (laughs) her plan works, she's he's going to find out that she was the one who badmouthed him to Devon and and whatnot, and that it was just a sympathy vote, and that he never had a chance to stay in the first place. Sasha, is there a possibility Nicole could give the sympathy vote and then also Devon and Kevin and David said, you know what? F these people. Let's (laughs) vote to vote out Tyler. So yes and no, right? I think theoretically what I believe that the three, right? Davon, Kevin, and David should do is lie. Hello, welcome to Big Brother. And say, you know, we're voting Tyler, uh, sorry, voting to keep Tyler, like, you know, we blah, 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 whatever reasons they're going to give and lie to Nicole, especially. And then Nicole feels safe because going back to the previous point, I don't believe Nicole is necessarily 100 percent doing it because she sees Ian like a brother. I think it is actually because it's her brand, like Rachel said, but it's also because she got in trouble with production. Probably, you know, something at least happened with production. mm -hmm. And I think she doesn't want to look bad. I I really think it's more that than it is this like idea that she actually cares about Ian. And that's why she's probably not correcting Danny as much as she would. Melissa, how hilarious would it be somehow if there's a 4-4 tie, Ian ends up staying, Nicole is hysterically crying then after the eviction? <laughs> it's possible. I mean... Nicole, why are you crying? <laughs> no reason. No reason. <laughs> so how do you stay? I'm just so happy that you're here. <laughs> I think that the problem is, is that like, 
in my mind, I'm like, wow, what a great scenario where, you know, Dave on and David and Kevin are like, you know, screw them. Like we're going to, we're going to do our own thing. We're going to say we're voting uh, to keep Tyler, but instead we're voting to keep Ian. Uh, and then Nicole thinks that it's a situation where she can cast up like a safe hinky vote or like a safe sympathy vote. And she does it. And then it's like, Oh, four, four. But I absolutely see at that point, Danny probably just, voting out Ian mm -hmm. and Tyler staying and then Davon, David and Kev or David and Kevin. But look will Danny, then. Melissa, on live TV, knowing what she oh. knows on I, national television for 3 million, 4 million people watching. All right, Danny, the world is waiting for you to decide here. I mean, it's true because it is, it is a situation where, according to like what would be shown on the TV show, or at least what Danny is kind of like putting out there for the TV show. Like for example, in the veto ceremony where she says like, you are the ultimate pawn. I don't want you to go home. I want Tyler to go home and saying in the diary room, like I want Tyler to go home while at the same time being like, yeah, let's get Ian out. I think okay. that like that could be right. something yeah, in her because... mind. That's like, okay, wait, this is going to look real so, bad. Just mm -hmm. to clean this up a little bit. Like I, no, no tea uh, to, to both of you, but like, this is weak sauce. This is not going to happen because like, no. one, here's the problem. He, Ian doesn't know. Ian Why doesn't can't know. you let us have any fun, Brent? I'm sorry. I guess <laughs> because the chat's like, this is confusing. I just want to make sure oh, that they're clear on what's happening. Well, what's so confusing? the fact the, 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 the fact because like they don't understand like the, the, the mechanisms of what's happening here. So hmm. that Davon and her group don't know that Nicole wants to give a sympathy vote. If they knew that maybe they would do this thing about lying and pretending, yeah. but like if they don't know that there's no reason for Look, them to I'm pretend. just going to throw out there. I think, I think Ian stays this week. Okay. Oh, I'm here for all Ooh. right. I think we have a lot of time left. I Put think that in it the universe. gets turned oh, please, around please. and I think yes. I do think Ian stays this week, but you know, you obviously you never know, but I'm just going to throw out there that that's what I think. I think that's what we want. I don't know if that's going to happen. I want it, but at the same time, like, I don't even know if I want it. Cause if Ian's really <laughs> going to just target Dave on, like that's like not great, yeah. you know? So, so I don't know. I think what we want is, we want Ian to like wake up and smell mm -hmm. the coffee around here and then <laughs> try to figure out what he's, what, yeah, where he's been. That's what we want. Ian needs to wake up. Also, I, here's the thing. If Tyler goes home and Ian stays now, I think Tyler, or, I think that uh, the, like Enzo's of the world are now going to look back at Danny. Now they're currently looking mm -hmm. at Davon, but I think they would look back at Danny and be like, okay, she's now more powerful because Ian stayed in the house and she broke a tie in his favor, like in this scenario that we're talking about. So like, uh, I, I, I do think that that it would actually be, uh, it would be beneficial for like people like Dave on and stuff to actually try to pull something like this off. But again, they don't know that that's what Nicole wants. She hasn't been honest about the fact that I want to cast a sympathy vote for Ian. If they knew that maybe they could rip yeah. something, but like this only happens in fan fiction. You guys come on. <laughs> okay. We love fan fiction. Yeah, okay. we love it. Um, let's, uh, your mama says over under three weeks, how much time does Danny have left in the house? I'd say under, under three weeks. Yeah. I'd wow. probably under. say under two. I, I, I think she'll gotta, be one of the first people to go when the, when the Alliance starts kind of imploding. Yeah. I think she got a one week stay of execution. Kevin or Dave on maybe David will go home this week, assuming they don't win HOH. And if that happens, the next week is the week that I think she would go home. Mm -hmm. I'll say the and over. I think it'll be at, I'll say the at over. Tyler's hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. If they don't get Tyler out here, I think he's going to the final two. Yeah. yeah. Look, he's winning. If he's not going home, I think Tyler. I don't know if he's winning. I don't know winning, how he's going to come sorry, back. Final two. I'll I don't say, know how yeah. he's going to come back. We can talk about this tomorrow, but I don't know how he's mm -hmm. going to come back from I want to quit the game to give me the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The edit. But, that's how. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, don't forget Danny is the veto queen. You know, uh, if she sort of like knows that her back is against the wall, we might see her play a lot differently than uh, in this game where she feels very safe in this house right now. Uh, very insulated. Uh, okay. A couple more questions. This is from uh, a unpronounceable name is Tyler to Cody as Ian is to Nicole. Uh, who can Nicole fall back on if Ian is evicted? Is there any chance of her still winning at this point? Okay, so how about this? If Ian walks out the door, do Nicole's chances to win walk out with him? 
No, no, I do. Mm-hmm. No, I don't believe so. I, in fact, I think that her chances take a little bit of a hit. Um, but her chances of actually winning the game, I still think are probably about the same as they ever were. It's just her chance of getting actually, I know, maybe that doesn't make sense, but like, I feel like her win equity is about the same, but actually getting to the end might be a little bit more difficult, uh, without Ian there, because that was somebody who definitely had her back. So, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, then, uh, Matt says who had the best fake tears of the night, David or Franzel. I feel like I've heard that one somewhere, uh, <laughs> earlier in this podcast. I but, liked uh, the double joke, tears Matt. from yeah. David, but I liked the glasses from Nicole, like yes. the pushing up of the sunglasses. Yeah, that was very Hollywood. That was very <laughs> it was. The, the drama. Yeah, yeah, it was drama. Yeah, and David Diet. got mad at her, by the way, for crying because she wasn't supposed to be yeah. crying. But we, we should note that, uh, Ian was supposed to be just like a pawn. He's just a pawn. He's just up mm-hmm. on the block. So why is Nicole crying? And she couldn't even help herself. Like he got named as the replacement nominee. Three seconds later, she's boohooing over in the corner and having to put yeah. sunglasses on like a diva. So if Nicole yeah. is really crying, is she is she crying about Ian leaving or her position in the game? Her position in the game. Yeah. yeah. Position. Yeah. She yeah. Nicole is for Nicole. Like I don't think we should get that confused. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, then, uh, James wants to know, how do you guys think Ian could get out of this? Any chances he could stay this week? Uh, so yes. here's the thing. I do not believe that this four, four, you know, fanfic is going to happen. However, <laughs> I do think that there will be a jury Comma buyback. Butt. Yes. I, I do wow. think that there will be a jury buyback based yeah. on the number of people that are left in the house. But will Ian they stay in the end. jury? Well, oh. once he finds out that there's a buyback, I think he might want to. Uh, you know, he only has to stay there for three weeks and uh, he can, then he can see, you know, or maybe even two weeks if there's like a double eviction and, uh, you know, he can quickly find out if he's got a chance to get back in the game or something. It yeah, also wonder... depends ahead, on his handler. It also depends on his handler. Cause he's been talking a lot about, I'm going to make my handler's life a living hell. So maybe if the handler I don't can, like to hear that. I know it's awful, but I'm saying if the handler can get it hap- to make it happen, you know, we'll stay. Yeah. People need to be nice to these handlers. Uh, yeah. That I I know a little bit about this from you know, being on the pre-jury in uh, Survivor All Stars, and you know uh, I, I I watch Richard Hatch uh, make a grown woman cry over uh, talking about how he was not going to listen to what she said. It wasn't fun, and yeah. it wasn't pretty. And you know these people are just trying to work. So uh, I, I think that uh, people should you know give these people a break. I do wonder. How about this? Uh, tell me if this is tinfoil conspiracy theory that did the, did the producers uh, hear this talk in the house and say, OK, we're going to have a problem with any of these people who go on the jury. They're all going to want to leave. We got to do a pre-jury buyback to make sure they stay in the jury, keep them there another three, four weeks. So they're closer to when. OK, but hey, you got a chance to go. You could leave, but you got a chance to get back in the house. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you might as well stick around. And then once they uh, stick around, like they're already like, hey, there. Like, like, OK, it's only like two more season. weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I absolutely so, see that. That might be a smart way uh, that they looked at it, but I don't know if yeah. they have that kind of uh, foresight into the psychology of the house guests. But man, you know, they're listening in. They know. Um, let's take. Uh, let's do one more question. Nat A, is Danny seriously not considering using her power in the last week? Uh, she can use it. She's definitely in danger of nomination next week. Brent, you sounded convinced that she was going to use it. I mean, like she's an idiot if she doesn't. I'll just yeah, say I that. Think she like, otherwise, use it no matter what. Yeah, I mean, like, just play, like, you know. Number one, you get the credit for playing yeah. it. Number two, like, okay, well, if you, you get an opportunity to win HOH again, if you don't win it, oh, well. Like, and it's not that powerful of a power, so I don't think people are going to be, like, so upset. You still have to win the competition. It just doesn't automatically make you HOH. I think that there's no reason for her to just be let, just throw it away. Like, you should never just throw a power away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's also important to remember in uh, Big Brother, you're not allowed to lie about your powers. Yeah. You're allowed to lie if you don't have them, but you can't lie and make something up that you don't have or, you know, lie about the abilities of the powers, unlike on, like, Survivor, where you can do pretty much whatever you want. So <laughs> it's not like uh, I could see a scenario where some people would be saying, well, it's good for her to keep the power a secret because then she could say, well, I have, like, you know, uh, a blocker power. I, I mm-hmm. can do whatever, but uh, be- because the rules of Big Brother, she can't do that. If she reveals that she has a power, she has to own what it is. Otherwise, she just can't reveal it period okay all right uh let's talk about what else is going on on rob has a website.com yesterday how about this we were graced with uh brendan and rachel on the slop 
Plus, uh, they talked about everything with Enzo. They played with Enzo. They played with Danny. Of course, uh, the whole rivalry with Nicole Franzel and more. We talked about it all with Brendan and Rachel, who are expecting baby number two. It's a boy. We talked about their photo shoot as well. Plus, uh, Puya Zambakili, uh co-piloted with me yesterday. We talked about Nicole Franzel's uh, spaghetti salad. Uh, Melissa, have you seen spaghetti salad? Uh, no, I think I saw a video or a, a GIF of it, but uh, yeah. I have not seen it in real life. Okay, check check <laughs> some out. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah, and Maggie Morgan <laughs> called in, uh, in as well over on the slop. Uh, then uh, we talked about on uh, News AF a couple of updates about the jelly bean contest, uh, which turned out to be not what we thought it was last week. And a woman who uh, was uh, busted cutting her, her hand off uh, to try to cash in on a $1.2 million insurance policy. Spoiler alert. Uh, they got caught. Uh, we took that, that with Danny and Tyson and on, today on News AF. Of course, uh, check this out. Over on Love Island, uh, the great Chantel Francis joined uh, Kirsten and Brian Scally to talk about week four of Love Island in our Rehap Ups feed. And then, of course, if it's Tuesday, the Purple Pants podcast is dropping. Check out what Bryce is talking about uh, every week on the Purple Pants podcast. Then tomorrow morning, join Taryn live at 11 a.m. Eastern for the live feed update. It's how I get my every day started. Uh, lots of fun to catch up uh, with what's going on as we get closer to eviction night. And then on a special Wednesday, it's the LFC round table is back. Uh, Brent and Melissa, did you feel like you have left anything left unsaid for tomorrow night? Oh, plenty. Yeah, I actually, I'm. <laughs> There's always how, stuff to say, right? Yeah, I don't know how Melissa feels, but I definitely like uh, parsed my words a little bit about stuff that I was going to say because I don't want to repeat the same things tomorrow. Like you know, especially when you're on two shows back to back, you gotta you gotta keep it fresh, Rob. Come on. Yes, yeah. uh, believe me, I get it. Um, yes. Who's doing better in the stock watch right now, Brent or Melissa? I believe Melissa is. Oh, Melissa. Shockingly, what's I'm been the secret better. to your success? Um, number one, forget to change anything um just like forget that the stock watch is happening and deadlines moves. like don't do anything um and then i've just kind of basically done like changed nothing i've like kept it on the same people except like increase it by one each week so mm -hmm. really like do nothing is really what i'd have to say like like just, make sense for this season you know yeah that's basically what i've done this season yeah. and i I think it's working. What everybody yeah. else is doing basically in the season. I will say that this tonight, no tea, was the best episode of Big Brother since Kaser won the safety suite. It was the best. It was <laughs> wow. really, it really was like because like Period. everything else up until then has been like really, really terrible from a fan's point of view. Haven't enjoyed the season very much at all. Watching Davon win the veto and watching these people like Cody Calafiori light their hair on fire because oh my gosh, she's gonna do something that I don't approve of. I'm like this is the big brother that I grew up on. I love stuff mm -hmm. like this. So I really hope we get a, I really hope we can we just get one H O H R way. Sasha, please, please from your lips to God's ear. <sighs> let's do it. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. <Oof. laughs> All right. Thursday night. Let's see what happens. Uh, as we talk about our live, live, uh, eviction ceremony, uh, join Taryn, Mel Hulst, and Jason Reed live on Thursday night. We break down uh, this big vote and then also uh, what happens next. Will America vote for HOH as Brent has predicted or will we see if they have one more competition left in the can from Big Brother Production? Join us live in 48 hours on Thursday night at 9.15 p.m. Eastern time right here on robinsonwebsite.com and on our YouTube channel, of course. All of this podcasting is made possible by the wonderful patrons of Rob Has a Podcast. Find out more about everything we're doing in our patron community, our patron podcast feeds, and more over at Rob Has a Website dot com slash patron of course thursday night we'll get it all started before the live show with our big brother eviction night pregame show i'll send all the patrons out a link on wednesday if you want to call in and have a chat with us about this vote about who you'd like to see 
as the HOH. And let me say, as we move into the second half of the month of September, uh, a, a great option for those of you who want to become a patron is to look at our annual membership where you pay for 11 months and get 12. And if you do a monthly option, Patreon will charge you uh, to, for the month of September, and then you get charged again for October. So as you get closer to the end of the month, uh, maybe something to look at for the annual membership at robinswebsite.com slash patron. Of course, follow us on social media. We've been trying to share more and more clips from the shows and post mm -hmm. polls and have all sorts of fun interactive features. You can follow us on Twitter at Rob is a podcast at RHAP Grams on Instagram or our Facebook page. Rob has a podcast. All right, Sasha, this was so nice to uh, get to catch up with you tonight. Uh, you were so fun. Thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate it. Like usually I'm just at home talking about this stuff <laughs> with my husband who's a casual so it was so nice to actually be with y'all who have been what listening. does your casual husband say about all this stuff he cannot handle the big alliance and he he was also mad today that davon like didn't get a bigger like edit and a bigger space on the show because i, like I him already. say a bigger veto yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you should get a bigger veto too <laughs> he watches yeah. the challenge with me so he knows davon is like actually pretty good on the challenge so he like I don't think he quite understands why this is so bad and uh, agreed because Davon won, I think eight like competitions on the challenge. So this is Whoa. so crazy. Yeah. She's won, I think five eliminations or something. It's crazy. Okay. Of course, Melissa, <laughs> it's, a, it's such a big day today. <laughs> I was so proud of uh, you as a, as a, to, as a part of RHAP. When I saw your video, it was uh, so wonderful. <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, now we, just have, we gotta have everyone go watch it. So go check it out. Um, I did a Big Brother Drunk History uh, for Keisha's birthday, and possibly one coming up. So keep your eye out. Okay. And where do people see that video? Uh, you can find it on my YouTube channel, but I think the best place to go is my Twitter, and then you can find it through there. Okay. Which, What's your YouTube handle, Melissa? I think it's just Melissa Denny. Okay. I think it's very plain. So it's Melissa yeah. Denny. Yep. Yeah. So. Melissa uh, Denny. It's easiest to find it uh, through Twitter. And so I already posted it this morning. So you can right. go ahead and find it there. It's Melissa with three A's. It's Melissa with three A's. Okay. All right. And then Brent, uh, you were fired up tonight. Do you, are you, will you permanently switch from Coke to Gatorade? No, uh, I need my Coke, uh, but I was feeling the Gatorade tonight. I just like the chat was asking me and I was like, I just didn't want a Coke tonight. Like, uh, you know, like I can, I can vacillate every now and then, you know, like just, I'm like that. If you win the stock watch, will you pour the Gatorade over your own head? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. By the way, can I just say that I don't know if you guys saw in the video, but the door just opened up and it was like there was knocking and I was like, We heard a knocking. Heck? Yeah. So I turned yeah. around and it's my mom being like, tell them day all the way. Day oh. all the way. I yeah. was like, oh my yes. God. Yeah. I was like, go away. <laughs> We're literally in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> okay. Get, get her in here next time. And next yeah. time. The next time, the casual corner. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Uh, this was a lot of fun tonight. Uh, we will be back in two days' time to talk about uh, what's going on between Ian and Tyler. Check out the stock watch tomorrow night, Taryn in the morning. Uh, thanks so much to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.